Hey there, I'm Albert, and I'm sure you know so-called title treatments. We see them all the time. They're like epic 3D versions of movie and video game and book titles that really show all the detail and grunginess and texture of the movie title. Like here, The Crimes of Grindelwald, or all of these here. These are title treatments. Now, they do take a little bit of work to make, right? A lot of hand painting, possibly, work in 3D programs to really make them shine. We don't have all that time, but what we do have is AIs like Stable Diffusion that will help us make titles like them within seconds. So here's a little preview of what we're going to make today. These two fictional video games slash movies that I came up with, and you're going to be able to make these in just a few minutes too. Let's get started. The technology I'm leveraging in this video is the so-called depth to image process, which is pretty new to Stable Diffusion. The basics are as follows. You create a normal image with Stable Diffusion, like this old man here in fog, and what a process called Midas is going to do is it's going to estimate a so-called depth map from this image. So black in this case means what is furthest away from the camera, the virtual camera, and white is closest, like this man's nose. If you zoom in, you can see the tip of the nose is the closest, therefore it's pure white. And what you can do with this depth map is now create other pictures that have the exact same composition, so shapes, with a completely different content. So a completely different man, this woman here, this neon cyberpunk lady wearing VR headsets. So it's crazy powerful and really helps you control your stable diffusion results, as you could also see in my last video where I used the same process to make blender textures. But today, I am really going to hack this process and trick Stable Diffusion with a fake depth map. So the first time I saw this is actually in this post 15 days ago on Reddit by user 6 Haunt, who just put white text on a black background in as a depth map and created this cool golden text. So I played around with this. I thought this was really cool because, of course, AIs are notorious for not being able to handle text, and figured out some really cool ways to make epic, you know, movie texts, movie titles, book covers, game covers, and so forth. The first thing you need is a functioning installation of the Auto 1111 web UI with Stable Diffusion. This looks like this, so it's one of the most popular ways to use Stable, so you can find plenty of info out there if you don't have this yet on how to install it and so forth. The basics are like this. You go to GitHub to the link that I also put in the description, so all of this is detailed in the description, and follow these installation instructions. Make sure you have the right PC specs before installing this, because it does take a while, and it's disappointing if you just don't even have the right computer to use it, so please check that first. Then, when you have that, you need to install the depth to image capability, which you do by downloading a model on Hugging Face. So you go here, Download this 512-depth-ema.ckpt file and put it in your model folder, which in my case is here, Stable Diffusion Web UI, Models, Stable Diffusion. So just put that in here as I did as well. And because this is a Stable Diffusion 2.0 model, you're going to have to put a YAML file in there as well, which is available here. So what you do is you go to this site, save page as, Go to your models folder as well. And what's important now is you save it named exactly the same as the CKPT you downloaded. So same exact name except dot YAML. And make sure it doesn't have like a dot TXT at the end or something. So save as type all files dot YAML and then put it there. And now to check, you reload your web UI and test if your depth model is here and if it's functioning. And now one final installation, which makes this a lot easier than it used to be, is available here in extensions in your web UI. So you click here, go to available, load from, and then you check for depth image IO, which is an extension to allow managing custom depth inputs to stable diffusion. So you install that, and then you will find a new feature down here in text to image under scripts, custom depth images. And this will enable you down here to upload a custom depth map in order to kind of trick Stable into doing what you really want. Because before, it was only available in image to image and would generate depth map based on the image you put in there, which of course severely limits your possibilities. So with this custom here, we can put in custom text, for example. So let's do that. 
how am I going to create this text? Well, you can do this in any photo editing, image editing app that you have. Um, I'm using Affinity Photo 2, but you can just as easily do this in Photoshop or even paint. It's fine. Who cares? Now, because this is text, it's usually wider than it is tall. So I'm going to go beyond the borders of that classic 512 by 512 stable diffusion square. So I'm going to change my page width to 768 pixels and leave the height at 512. Create. And the first thing we do is we make sure there's a layer in there and fill it with black. That's going to be our background. That's going to be removed at the end. It doesn't matter what's in here. And then we put in text. So you can just use any text tool available to you and make sure your text is white and pretty big. Like I'm going to go 300, for example. And you can enter test or whatever you want in any font you like. I've already prepared several titles that I designed quickly um, for you so we don't have to use that text document. I have this War Void Fracture, which is going to be kind of a fun military sci-fi game title, and this Realms of Avalon to show you that it can also do fantasy pretty well. So let's use the War Void Fracture in our first example. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click to upload here and load in this sci-fi image. Then up here in the settings, I'm going to change the sampling method to DDIM because it's just a little better. I've experienced sampling steps is fine at 20 and the width is important to change to 768 just like our source image or else it's going to warp that image. Batch count I put up to four depending on how long your computer takes for this. I have an RTX 2070 Super so it's decently fast and I'm going to get several options out of there. Everything else can stay. And I would suggest the first couple times you do this, you leave this check mark um, that appends the depth image to outputs. So it's just going to put that depth image at the end of the results again, so you can see if, you know, it did anything weird during the process. If you're seeing strange artifacts, you can see if it changed the depth map in any way. And now the most important, as usual, is prompting. So I've played around with this a whole bunch. And what I realized is that... Um, you can do the following to get some pretty good results. So you do your text here, like whatever you want, and then top down view. So we get kind of a flat texture type view. Seamless, again, staying in the texture results. Epic, cinematic, 2K award winning. I'm pasting all this in the description as well, by the way. You don't have to copy off the screen. Great lighting, shading, high quality, and detailed and almost just as important or possibly more important the negative prompt where I do ugly, bad colors, bad taste, cartoon, illustration, low resolution, low quality, terrible, cropped, wrong, black and white, BW, out of focus, blurry. Of course, if you do want anything that's in here, like black and white, for example, make sure you remove that from the negative prompt because that can get really frustrating. And now let's um, let's make that work for this specific sci-fi example. So what I've found for sci-fi that can be pretty cool is something like dirty, rusty metal and blue and red lights. So that can come out looking pretty cool. But enough talk, let's generate some. And here we go, we have some results. So as you can see, out of our plain white text, which is really easy to do in almost any program, we got some neat 3D painted game look with some blue and details and rust and all the letters are kind of custom, right? They all have different layers. And this would take a while to do, you know, you would have to hand paint this or do it in a 3D program, which of course needs much more knowledge and experience to make it look like this. And here we got it within a couple seconds and a whole bunch of different options as well. So this one's kind of really colorful. That's using a lot of the blue and red lights in the prompt. This one's kind of neutral, more like a, you know, could also be an intense Call of Duty or something. We can right click and copy this and bring this into our editing program. Paste it in. It's going to fit perfectly because we made sure it would. So, of course, what it still has is a background. So if you want to use this in any other way than this, like on a book cover or a game 
box or something like that, you are going to have to cut out these letters. What of course you can do is use the original text as a mask. So in Affinity Photo, you just need to drag it on here and it'll cut that out. But of course, as you can see, it isn't perfect because depth of image is of course still a little imprecise. It's at a very low resolution. So it will need some manual work after this anyway, but it's already pretty good. So now let's get on that fantasy title that I still wanted to show you. So we've replaced the depth image, this time with the Realms of Avalon text. One pretty important rule you need to follow when doing this is using pretty thick fonts with very few little lines and so forth, because details do get lost, as we just saw with the War Void picture, and um, we're going to experience it with this symbol, for example. That's why I used it. It is still a very low resolution. So it has its limits. And if you want to do smaller details, you're going to have to do them piece by piece with a lot of cropping and editing later, which is possible. It's just a process that's more involved and needs some experience in Photoshop. So for that, just check my very first videos on this YouTube channel where I do all the image to image in detail and, you know, pick out what works for you from that process. So for fantasy, I played around a little bit with prompts. And what I got is something like shiny fantasy metal texture with imperfections to make it a little interesting, comma, chrome. And here you see it, it looks really cool. And believe me, it's pretty hard to get a result like this with any other process, especially in a short time like that. I'm currently designing a logo for a streaming series and it's something like this and requires so much lighting and 3D work to get anywhere close. This is a cool one. It has a lot of variety in the metal, looks very intense and fantasy, has great lighting. This is a completely different style, also looks excellent. Again and again, so you can really play around. But as I warned, it did turn this rune into like a flower or some sort of wheel. So don't expect too much from it. I'm sure it's going to get better in the future. So I hope you can tell this has a ton of potential. It's already usable for many purposes, like a small indie game studio or something that needs a logo. But even if you're working on a big project, you can use this for prototyping. If you need to develop a logo look that has a lot of details already so you can show some executives, hey, this is probably around what it's going to look like, this level of detail, then you can produce like 20, 30, hundreds of options within minutes of your logo without laying a finger on a 3D program or starting to hand paint. And you can do it in a ton of different styles. This is the fantasy style. You can do a game style and of course, thousands of others. Your prompting skill is the only limit. If you learned anything from me today, anything at all, I would love if you showed your appreciation with a click on that subscribe button and the little bell so you're notified the next time I make a Stable Diffusion video. Also, I appreciate likes and comments if you have any questions about this process. If anything was unclear, feel free to comment. If you have any suggestions for future videos, do the same. And with that, see you next time. I'm Albert Bosazan, and I hope you have fun with Stable Diffusion.